Welcome everyone to the Q&A session for our upcoming course, Radiant Lotus Qigong Practice for Women, the seven-week dive into living, week, living practices for your healing, balance, and empowerment. I'm Lisa Bunnies, and I'm really looking forward to this Q&A conversation for the Shift Network, where we'll explore the teachings of Daisy Lee and address questions about her upcoming seven-week course, Radiant Lotus Qigong Practice for Women, which begins Thursday, November 8th. And later, I'll explain how you can participate in this course, even if you can't attend the live sessions. But first, I want to introduce our guest. Daisy Lee is a respected leader in the Qigong world with more than 20 years of teaching experience. She's certified as a level three advanced Qigong instructor and clinical practitioner by the National Qigong Association of America, as well as being a past board member of the International Qigong Science Association in Beijing. She lectures and conducts workshops and instructor trainings internationally with a specialty in women's health. Her signature program, Radiant Lotus Qigong, is now taught in 13 countries. In just a few minutes, we're going to take questions, but uh, first, I would like to welcome Daisy, who's going to begin our call by leading us in an opening practice. Welcome, Daisy. It's a pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you, Lisa. It's a pleasure to be here. Hello, everyone. I wanted to share with you again the showering chi movement that you might have learned and seen on the intro call. And uh, it will help us get into a, a balanced, peaceful place before we begin. So I'm going to go back and I will share this movement with you. We'll repeat it five times because the number five is the number for transformation. And that's what we hope to do in this course. So let me go back. And we'll begin here. Again, the hands are facing each other and we're going to open to the sides as we inhale up. At the shoulder height, we turn and exhale. Inhale upwards, magnetizing the energy from above and feel it sift through the body all the way through and down through the body, down and out through the legs. Any stresses of the day get recycled at the earth's core. And again, inhale and rising up. Turn at the shoulder height, exhale. Inhale. And exhale down. If you need to take an extra breath, that's fine. Just feel the sifting through the Wei Qi field of the body. Inhale and rise. Turn and exhale. Inhale up. Attracting the energy from above. Exhale all the way down and through. Just feel the body relaxing and clearing out any stagnations or blocked energy that it might have accumulated throughout the day. Inhale the night sky if you're on the East Coast and sift through all the way down and through. And one last one. Inhale and open. The Earth's en nurturing energy rises and meets the light from above. And exhale down. Long, slow, gentle exhale. And crisscross your hands one over the other and draw it back into the lower belly. And just take a moment to feel your peace and balance. Connect to your body. Okay. I hope you felt how it decompressed the body and cleared the energy of the day 
away and down. So that's the showering chi movement. One of the movements, one of the key movements that you'll learn in the Radiant Lotus practice for women. And there will be many more. Um, Lisa will, you know, be asking the questions that you have uh, for me or um, questions about this practice that you might have uh, have some curiosity about so that we can give you the information that you need and hopefully bring you back into balance, whether it's physically, mentally, or emotionally. And so we'll begin now. Before we go too far in, I wanted to share with you that uh, on Facebook, there's been a contest or a raffle that um, people were entering with their emails. And at the end of this hour, Lisa is going to use a, a random number generator to pick one of the names from the people that submitted uh, for this contest to win the full course, full seven course meal of Radiant Lotus Women's Qigong. So we're excited about that. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to tune in and w she'll announce the first name for privacy. But at the end, we will email that person to let let that person know who won. So good luck, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Daisy. So we have the rest of our time together to dive into your questions for Daisy Lee as we prepare for her upcoming course. Again, it's called Radiant Lotus Qigong Practice for Women, and it begins Thursday, November 8th. And if you want to check out the website and learn more about this seven-week course, you can visit qigongforwomen.net, not .com, .net. You see it on the bottom of the screen, so you see how we're spelling it, qigongforwomen.net. And that's where you'll see the full description and register if you'd like. So let's go ahead and get started for, uh, with questions. If you have a question for Daisy, go ahead and type them in and I'll be happy to read them aloud. And we do have some questions already waiting for us. So let's go ahead and start with a question here from Robin who says, I love the philosophy and spiritual backdrop to Qigong. How much of this will be woven into your program? The, the philosophy is definitely a significant part of Radiant Lotus Qigong practice. And I think when we understand how, how to be in life, not just how to do movements, it changes how you are in your daily life. And so this is one of the keys of practice is how do I embody this practice so that the everyday situations that I run up against or the stresses that might, I might face in a day will be better managed and the stress lowered. So part of this is how to transform stress, but we... Uh, scientists have found that when you use movement to manage what's going on with the busy mind and uh, the emotions that are might, you know, on a particular day be exploding out of you, that when you use physical practice in tandem with the breath, synchronized with mindful intention, that it changes really how you manage everything in your life after a while. So we call it practice because it's the practice that gets you there. It's not just, you know, you go to uh, a class only once a day or, or once a week. Um, it's always better to do even five minutes of practice a day than it is to do a whole hour at the end of the week. So I'm, my hope for you is that you will actually do some of the practices, as, practices that you learn with me that day or that evening and you take it home and you start to do a little bit every day. And after a while, it'd be like brushing your teeth, right? If you brush your teeth only once a, a week, <laughs> we'd be in trouble. But if, if you do something, um, you know, regularly in your day, it starts to have an effect. And the cells start to listen, the body starts to listen, and you're able to change the pattern that might have been set previously in your life. So that's what what the opportunity is in this practice that we do together. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we've got a question here. Actually, there's no name on this one. It's just an anonymous question that says, thank you for focusing on women. Does your program include women in their 60s and 70s, or is it more focused on younger women? It's actually all women. So from the time that uh, a young woman has her cycle, her menstrual period, to the what I call the wisdom years, um, this is this practice envelops all of that, all of those stages of life, and uh, in particular, what I feel is most important as, 
after after uh, menopause, the estrogen levels drop in the body. And as a result of that, the bone density also can decrease. And uh, that's often a, a concern for many women going into their, uh, we call it the third spring. The second spring is menopause, but the third spring is when the wisdom is really flowering in a different way. The body might be shifting and changing. And what we do through this practice is learning techniques that actually um, increase or at least at the very least maintain the bone density that you have. And so they, they show that palpation, um, cupping and shaking the body, which is a, a very uh, primary part of the radiant lotus qigong path, is that that actually, that percussiveness will actually increase the bone density. And so um, there's actually studies that show that shaking and cupping will, will do that and improve and maintain bone density into the elder years. So I hope that answers your question uh, and will help you come to practice with us. Well, that's fascinating. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, let's uh, carry on along those same lines here. Marlene says, I'm intrigued to hear you say that the showering chi exercise works on hot flashes. How does it work? Mm -hmm. And will it help to also visualize what the energy is doing while performing the exercise? And if so, what should I visualize? Well, Marlene, definitely the, you know, Qigong is a, a synchronization of the mind's intention. You can use visualization with that intention. Um, the breath, which it, often in this style, um, not always, but often it, the breath is slow, deep, smooth, and gentle. And so when we are able to synchronize those components plus proper body posture when we're doing our movements, then it actually helps, uh, what do you say, de-escalate or decompress, you know, the energy that's pushing up into the head or up through the liver. And so when there's blocked energy, a lot of times what happens is because the liver has to process so much in terms of toxins and emotions such as anger, that energy will be pushing upwards. And what we, we need to do and why showering Chi works so well is that the hands are guiding the energy. The breath is being guided on the exhale to release tension out through the bottoms of the feet and hands. And so even though it seems like, you know, how can something like this do so much? Um, hopefully when you have practice with me, you will feel what it has done. And so it's the slowness of the movement. It's the slowness and gentleness of the breath. And anytime you go down through the midline, as we're doing with the showering chi movement, you actually centralize energy and you're, you're showing your body what direction the energy needs to move. Yeah, and so that's why there are, uh, throughout this course, I will share variations, but you know, the first variation is how to help with hot flashes, how to uh, decompress and release blocked energy from the upper body down through the lower body and then out uh, into the earth where it's recycled. So that is one of the reasons that we do showering chi. And um, this, is, this is what it's for, yeah. It can also help um, for anyone that has, who's you know, prone to elevated blood pressure, you can also do this. And if you're, if you're prone to low blood pressure, then you want to sit and just you know, uh, do it seated so that you know, the, the, the energy moves through the body more gently. And so the slower you move, the more you will probably feel and you'll feel the difference. And uh, probably in contrast to the busyness of the outside world, you probably feel it even more when you do this kind of movement. So the breath guides the movement, but the movement also has this other layer of support to release blocked energy from the body. Yeah, so hope that um, explains what you what you intended, 
Uh, is it Marlene that was asking that question, Lisa? Yes, that's who it was, Marlene. Okay. Yeah, so hopefully you got what you needed from that, Marlene. And next. All right. <laughs> Uh, well, we're getting a lot of questions about um, sort of looking for, for medical advice. And I want to say before we go into any of these questions that Daisy can't offer any sort of medical advice. So any responses are, are general. Please don't take these as prescriptions or anything like that. Uh, so with that said, uh, Cynthia is asking about, uh, she says, is the practice okay if I have osteoarthritis in my knees? Mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, if you, and just to reiterate what Lisa was saying, that we're not doctors, we're not, uh, we're not here to diagnose or to give prescriptions. Having said that, in China, we prescribe Qigong, so we don't prescribe medicine. We, we share Qigong, we teach Qigong so that it empowers the general population so that um, the energy is moving through the body and it's the energy that helps to be rebalanced inside the body. And so we're not providing cures and I want to uh, uh, remind people of that, that it in increases your immune system, it boosts your immunity, but it's not uh, you, you still have to go to your doctor, you know, to get proper medical care. And often what happens is people uh, will work in tandem with Qigong. So they're given something that they can do at home so that they can find that balance and improve their immunity. Um, so Lisa, you were, you were saying uh, this question about the osteoarthritis. Yeah, yeah, she said uh, she has osteoarthritis in her knees. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she can do the whole, all of this in a seated position. So if there's any uh, concern or worry, worry about that, all of Qigong can be done seated. And so when I teach at hospitals or um, I teach those that are in wheelchairs, the whole routine is done in a seated position. Yeah, so it's more upper body. But um, one of the things that I think is a good reminder, even in something like the shaking routine that you'll learn in module one, those are, um, those are gentle down. So I still advise that you gently do everything gently and um, do everything smaller. So rather than, um, you know, trying to, to be too rigorous about any of the movements. In fact, Qigong, as you've just seen, the, the movements are not rigorous. The, you, you always go to your body's um, you know, maximum ability without pushing too far. So we always say in Qigong, pain, no gain, right? So the, we, we have a very different way of thinking uh, about going to extremes like they, they might sometimes do in um, aerobic kind of exercises. We don't do that because everything is synchronized. Uh, most times, you know, the breath is synchronized with the movements. And so the breath slows you down and you can use the mind to send the breath into the part of the body that is affected by some stagnation and you see it moving and traveling through, out through, the joint out through the knee, back into the earth where it is recycled. So there's a, a famous expression in Qigong, and that is all blockages, all disease comes from blocked or stagnant qi. And that means uh, the blockage is perceived as uh, either inflammation or intense energy. And so how do we clear that? How do we engage the mind to support that clearing. So not just um, physical, gentle, graceful movements, but how do you engage the breath? How do you engage the mind? And so when the three come together in the synchronization, there's something magical that happens inside the body. So what we're doing is kind of giving the, the, the body a new pattern, giving the mind a new pattern to latch onto, because the best way to um, displace an old pattern 
is to regularly introduce a new pattern. And so if it's a healthy pattern, then the body starts to feel, oh, she's doing something that is helping me to optimize. And so that optimization happens because you've sent the signal in through the movement, through the breath, through your mind's intention, and you're uh, not reinventing yourself, but sometimes it feels like you're reinventing yourself because there is a, a new coordination, a new pattern, a new map that the body is uh, latching onto and using as support for uh, new information to come into the body. Yeah, so I hope that helps in this understanding. Right, thank you. I, I, I believe it will. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we've got a question here from Sarah who says, is this, actually it's two questions. Is this course good for <laughs> beginners? And then I'm hoping to use it for anxiety relief while working through trauma. Will that be effective? Oh, most definitely, Sarah. Um, the This is a beginner's course, actually. So it's an introduction to Radiant Lotus Qigong for women. It's a you know, this is how we start. Um, all the movements are simple enough that uh, hopefully you've, you know, with the practice of showering chi, you will feel that, yes, I get this, I understand it. I, I can move my arms and open like so. And so simple enough that um, I have taught people as uh, young people as young as five and as old as 105. Um, and so the, the age range is huge, but most times when I teach women, especially this program, um, it's, it's more uh, women who are menstruating into their 80s, 90s, um, you know, it will increase flow of energy. So those that have any blockages in terms of stiff joints or, um, you know, pains here and there, um, that this type of practice will help you know, move the energy so that those blockages will clear. Yeah. And so definitely for beginners, um, but even those that are, are quite practiced, but come from a different background of Qigong, maybe uh, the background has been of a co-ed Qigong. This is more specific towards women's health and especially for hormonal health. Yeah. So that's the that's the, the gift of Radiant Lotus Qigong is that we're working, especially um, its whole body. However, there are parts of the body with, that we pay special attention to, and that's the breasts and the uterus. And so um, having said that, even if someone has uh, parts of their body that are missing, whether it's a, a breast or um, ovaries that are missing because of of uh, operation that happened, then we do things differently. And everything is that gentle that even someone who's gone through um, surgery or has gone through uh, a kind of invasion in the body, because we consider that some of these, um, you know, some of these things that happen with with our bodies that our doctor recommends something and, and we follow through. Um, it's also an opportunity to work with the, the body as it is. So this is very important because it, when you accept and not just accept, but love yourself, love yourself as you are, accept yourself as you are, no matter what kind of uh, dramas or traumas have happened in the body, to the body, that the opportunity is to regain that equilibrium and self-compassion. So earlier, someone asked about the philosophy of Qigong, uh, of Radiant Lotus Qigong. And this is, I think, um, Sarah, really pivotal to how we can unfold the, you know, our life path. Um, when we have something that we can stand with or stand in alignment with, that changes how all of our life is lived. And so that's why I say that self-compassion is so important because we might forget that, you know, if we haven't been treated with respect, um, it's hard to find confidence. It's hard to find, you know, that you, that you love and accept yourself. 
And so it's to rebuild if it needs to be rebuilt uh, or to construct it sometimes for the first time. And so we're here for that. We're here to engage that way, to empower women to find the, the truth of who they are and to empower that voice, to empower their bodies with self-care. And that's the opportunity with Radiant Lotus Qigong. Yeah, so I hope that helps, Sarah. Okay, so, well, she was also asking about, will this help with anxiety while she's working through trauma? Uh, yes, most definitely, because trauma and anxiety you know, the, the energy is moving up with anxiety and the heart is racing. So we're doing work with key organs like the heart, um, you know, like the, the pressing up energy that goes upwards. And so the movement that you just learned, the Shaoring Qi movement, helps to bring the energy down so that it settles more gently and peacefully in the body. So... Um, very, very clearly, uh, this practice will inform that and give your body new signals so that you can help to help yourself, first of all, um, help yourself with, you know, taking a, away that stress and releasing that stress. And one of the, in the first module, you're going to learn a shaking routine. And that is one of the ways that very quickly we discharge the energy through this kind of gentle shaking. And then we do something like showering chi, which uh, the showering chi movement is kind of a, uh, an easy backup default movement that most women use to help with alleviating stress and anxiety. So that's why it's used for both hot flashes, anxiety, it's an emotional release, but a very gentle emotional release technique. Yeah, so indeed it does. All right, thank you. If you're just <laughs> joining us, we're here with Daisy Lee, learning about her upcoming course, Radiant Lotus Qigong Practice for Women, which begins on Thursday, November 8th. And you can log on to qigongforwomen.net for all the details and to register. Let's go ahead and get back to the questions. We have plenty of them here for us. Uh, and this is, I think, a really good question here for this time. Mary Ann wants uh, to know if you can describe how the course will be given and can I view it at my own time and pace? So maybe you can give sort of a rundown of how the course is actually laid out. Well, the course is in, and uh, the full course is seven modules. And so once a week we meet for 90 minutes, uh, it would be 8 p.m. Eastern time or 5 p.m. Pacific. You have to go through the uh, uh, time converter to find out. Um, we have people that will be joining us from Europe and Australia and other countries as well. So um, it would be impossible to be up you know, at crazy hours. So the way they, um, Shift has partnered to do this is that if you're joining from a very different time zone, you you have the recording, the both the um, the video recording as well as the audio recording and the written transcripts, and so you have this as the uh, the place that you go to, whether you can join live or not, and all of these um, all of these modules. You know, they, they'll go for 90 minutes, but even after the program is done, you'll have access to them. And so even if you can't join me live, uh, join all of us live, then there's this uh, other way of doing it so that people who are coming in internationally can participate as well. Um, there's also a Facebook community that you'll be sharing with your colleagues from uh, around the world, uh, I hope, I'm trusting. And, you know, some of those answers will be provided uh, by, by the people. I'll come in now and then whenever I can. Um, but, you know, that community is going to be built through the women that are participating. And so there will be some exchange there as well. Um, so that, that's the, you know, that's the look of it. The only time we are not getting together is Thanksgiving um, week. Uh, that's the Thursday 
Thanksgiving that there is no program. We skip that week. And then there is one in December near the Christmas holiday that we we also don't have. So you can check with uh, the support staff at, at Shift Network for the exact schedule. But we'll be going all the way until January 3rd. So I take you through the, the most intense of the holiday season when women tend to be a little uh, busier than normal <laughs> and perhaps a little frazzled with everything that's going on. And so uh, this is why it's so important to actually maintain a practice. And as I said, even if you can't join me for the 90 minutes, you'll have you can um, take the opportunity to look at it afterwards and uh, pick out the salient pieces because there's a, a 20 to 25 minute module um, in in the center of the practice that uh, it's given as, uh, I believe it's given as homework. And you learn about it before and then you practice and you come back and then we do it again together when we're, uh, when we're live. Okay, so that's the general format that we're taking. Uh, so it's 30 minutes of teaching, uh, live and then the module you know that um, the segment that we're doing practice together uh, beautifully shot in his studio and then there's the q a at the end for the last 30 minutes so i hope that explains you know the the basic format and how we're going to be in touch and uh, any questions that you might have from the previous week you can ask, ask in the next week uh, Lisa, did that? Was there another part to that question that I might have missed? Uh, I, th I think that was a pretty thorough explanation. I'll be giving a few more details in a little bit, but I think that you answered that question pretty well. Thank you. Um, okay. And we've got a question here from Karen who says, I'm wondering if it's necessary to believe in Chi for your program to be effective mm -hmm. or if practicing the program will make me be able to feel it. I have to say that following along with your presentation, I didn't really feel any energy moving through my body. Uh, and will uh -huh. doing the program help me get in touch with my energy? I would really like to hope so. Um, in the first module, you will learn that, how to activate the chi in your hands. And then I will teach you how to feel. And that's, that's something I'll start from the very top. Yeah, so um, is it necessary to believe no, because they've done studies where people have qi emission coming out, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, being given to them, I should say, or as receivers, and they receive even without knowing what's happening. And so it's, uh, I would say, in a way, it's almost like what they've done with prayer studies, where the intention of the group to heal for anyone that's participating to be empowered and to heal, that sets up a, a unified field of energy for the group. And that becomes the opportunity to go into sync or into resonance with that field. So everyone that's joining will be participating, whether they realize that that hookup is happening or not. And uh, time will probably tell. Um, and so I think as you go through the program, you will start to tune in. Uh, I do advise if you're a writer that um, you might want to consider journaling and noticing what are the differences before practice and what are the differences after practice. Yeah, so that would be my suggestion, uh, Kim, for this, you know, especially this uh, introductory program so that you understand and start noticing what is happening in the body. So our attentiveness to and tuning in and listening to our bodies is also part of Qigong because it's in a sense, Qigong is sensitivity training, right? It, it helps us to tune into what is really happening inside and gives us the space for that inquiry to happen. Okay, so Hopefully that answers your question, Kim. All right, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Sylvia says, often older women have too much yin energy in the lower body and too much yang energy in the head. How do we balance mm -hmm. that? Well, you know, once you 
once you start moving through the obstructions in the body, because the yin, the, the tendency of yin is almost natural because we're working with the, the earth's gravitational field. So yin is considered the earth, the uh, cold, solid matter, and yang is this kind of more effusive, active, considered male light energy. And so the opportunity is to balance the yin and the yang. So one one doesn't displace the other, but it's finding balance between, you know, these different states. And so because we're working with gravity or actually we're sort of working against gravity, uh, one of the cupping routines that we do with women's qigong where actually the movements come up through the body and the hands are cupping upwards to defy gravity and bring energy upwards so that the physical body starts to change its actual shape, which is really interesting for women to experience. Um, and break down blockages that might be not only in the on the surface but in the deeper tissues as well, especially when we do uh, the sound healing. So the sound healing will the vibration will actually go in through the layers into the deep tissues and activate uh, and remind the body of its you could say its original optimum blueprint. Yeah, and so yang energy going up is sometimes because there's um, there's too much thinking going on. And so to not think so much and to not have the mind be so disturbed, we use the movement synchronized with the breath. And uh, we also do early on uh, a vertical alignment exercise where we are, you know, yes, grounding to the earth and borrowing from her energy, but also lining up to uh, a point you know, high above us, uh, that's considered like our, um, a star point. And uh, as if every one of us has one of these points of light. And so if we think of it in a vertical plane, it will help to, you know, draw energy up, but then come around and draw energy back to the earth. So it's moving in this kind of toroidal field. And once you become aware of it, then you can activate it with the mind. Yeah, and so it might seem a little, uh, you know, elusive at this point because um, if you haven't experienced uh, a lot of practice yet, you you need to really practice to understand what it does in your body. So hopefully practicing with me in these seven weeks will at least start that process off for you. Okay, Okay, great, thank you. Uh, well, we have time for a, a few more questions, but before we take those, I want to give a few more details about the course itself. People are still asking, and this is a good time to do that. Uh, again, the course is called Radiant Lotus Qigong Practice for Women. And this is going to be, as far as I'm concerned, a fascinating seven-week journey under Daisy's expert guidance, where you'll wake up your body's immunity and discharge stagnant qi to dissolve stress, heal illness, and prevent disease. And the seven-week course takes place on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, starting Thursday, November 8th. And this is the question a lot of people have, even though Daisy has explained this. If you can't join us live, that's fine. You will not miss the teachings. You're going to receive audio and video recordings that you can keep, transcripts, and all course handouts on your course homepage. Uh, Also, I'd like to remind you that the Shift Network offers a no-risk money-back guarantee on our courses, giving you until November 29th, that's three weeks in this case, to make sure that you absolutely love it. And as an edit option, all participants are welcome to connect in a private Facebook community group so you can stay connected with one another and ask your questions between classes. Also, everyone who registers receives the Radiant Lotus Qigong Practice for Women bonus collection. First, you'll receive an audio talk with Daisy Lee entitled Empowering Our Third Ear, The Power of Deep Listening in Qigong. Then you'll get a video dialogue with Daisy hosted by Sharon Rose called Radiant Lotus Qigong, A Health and Empowerment Practice for Women. Next, you'll receive an audio dialogue with Prune Harris hosted by Dondi Dolan, entitled Energy Medicine and Womb Wisdom, 
healing the womb to give birth to our power and vitality. Also, you'll get a $10 discount on a membership with the National Qigong Association. And when you register by midnight Pacific on Friday, November 2nd, you'll receive an additional bonus gift. And that is another audio talk with Daisy entitled Blossoming into Your Potential Through Radiant Lotus Women's Qigong. So before we get back into questions, let me ask you, Daisy, what are you most looking forward to sharing in your upcoming course? Oh, my goodness. That's a that's a big question (laughs) because there's so much that I do want to share. Um, what am I most is to help women to relax more, to know that they have tools that they can use through personal practice to manage the everyday stresses in their lives. Um, you know, every, every system has, uh, a way to manage stress, I believe, but, Probably this one, in terms of what I've learned from my teachers, is the it's a living practice. And I think that's what I want to impart more than anything, that um, when when you're when you're searching for that tool that is a, a quick default, all you have to go, all you have to do is go into alignment with greater forces than yourself. Sometimes we feel like we're so alone and that we don't have resources. And to to have that reminder and to do it through practice, to do it in community with all of us together, I think is one of the greatest opportunities of practice. Um, you know, sometimes you go home and this is, you're, you're confronted by what's happening at home or you're at work and you're, you're uh, having to multitask um, kind of the crises that might be happening at work. And so there's always something, but what if you had something, a tool that you could use on an everyday basis and immediately go into alignment with your highest self, with neutral compassion, so that you end up being a stable lead energy for all those that are around you. And so that's the the biggest thing that I would probably uh, leave everyone with and that I, I hope that they will get. Um, movement will take you there deeper. And so that's very important to know is that we can have all these ideas and philosophies, but if you actually use the movement with the understanding of this philosophy, then it starts to entrain the body and train the mind and train the emotions to be more uh, at peace and more grounded and I think that's what's needed in these times. Uh, there's a lot that's happening out there that is uh, not attractive, um, that uh, really takes power away from women. And it's not even about power. It's really, it takes away the dignity of women. And it's time that that shifted. And the only way we can do it is if women stand and do practice or they sit and do practice and they stay in their alignment even as they speak their truth and they become leaders in their own right because that's what's needed at this time. Yeah, and it it doesn't uh, exclude men from, um, you know, being empowering forces in women's lives, but I think more than ever, because of, you know, so many things happening in our society, in all countries, not just in the U.S., uh, that this is needed more than ever. So find your balance, find your peace, find your stability so that you can operate from a place of balance and harmonious balance. So I I feel that this is, if I'm going to leave uh, you with any message, it would be that. It's like, how do you come back into center? How do you come back into yourself? And when that, when that becomes the resonant energy, this starts to multiply out into the world. And it becomes the stability for, for everyone. It's almost like we form a grid. Uh, I imagine it as all these women in different parts of the world participating. And these are the different points of light out in the world. And, you know, creating stability for all of us as a collective. 
but also within us as individuals. Yeah, so that, that would be my, my main message, Lisa. <laughs> Health and right. empowerment. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. All right. You're welcome. All right. Well, let's, go. <laughs> let's go to a question here from Amy Jane, who says, will you be offering any specific advice or exercise for us ladies with endometriosis? Is this stagnant chi? It is considered a form of stagnation. Uh, and so Amy, Amy Jane, is that the name? Yeah, so it is a form of stagnation in, uh, in the lower body, of course, in the womb. And so, you know, to be gentle, there's a movement that we call the swimming dragon. And it's a very peaceful, gentle movement. And we sweep and clear the energy field around the abdomen. You can do it in different parts of the body, but it's very specifically for the womb. Um, and so there's that that can be, you know, part of the practice that helps you get into flow and to create flow in the body. Um, there's also gentle circles, gentle cupping um, done around the abdomen. And that, uh, and, and the word, operative word is gentle. It gently breaks down stagnations that might be either formed or forming in the body. And so those are at least a couple of the, the uh, techniques and exercises that we'll be doing in this practice throughout these weeks. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can uh, see what week that comes up, but uh, it's about halfway through. We'll be w working on that. The, the womb awareness is the name you know, part of that is also the sound healing because sound works from the inside out as often as it sound works from the outside coming in because we're using our own voices. It actually works from the inside and vibrates outwards. And so we've had some really interesting things happen with women who are working in groups. And so when they do sound practices, uh, targeted sound practices, uh, that focalize on the sounds for the lower body or the hormone hormone balancing sounds that will actually break down some of the stagnation that's in the uh, in the womb or the different parts of the body that are being targeted. So um, we'll be learning two of the sounds, so the upper and lower body. So when you uh, have like a few different techniques that help with this, and you're targeting part of the body, then you can have sometimes more of an effect. And when you have it done as a group with women in that group, you can have uh, kind of surround sound. And that has been really interesting experiment that uh, some of the, the women's groups have been doing to good effect. Yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's what I would say, Amy, for that. Endometriosis is sometimes, uh, I've, I have a number of friends with endometriosis. And, um, you know, they've gone, gone through some trauma about it because it can be very painful. And so when we do the showering chi, not showering chi, combination of showering chi and the swimming dragon, they're clearing the outside field that emanates outside the body. And that clearing can help alleviate at least the pain yeah, so try. We will have to try that when we're together, and you can see for yourself what it does. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope that helps, Amy. Okay, thank you for that. And again, the website is qigongforwomen.net if you want to go ahead and take a look and see which module that will be. Um, let's do a question here from Darlene who says, is this class appropriate for pregnant women? Oh, definitely. Yes. Uh, for pregnant women, uh, actually the movement that I was just um, suggesting for Amy is to clear that chi field around the body. We modify it for women. Some of the shaking routine, you know, is done seated. And uh, as I said, not big movements, but just almost like a vibrational movement. And so everything is modified. And when we're in the program together, I will actually mention those modifications, starting with the most safe for those that are pregnant or have mobility issues. And then we, we go into the broader spectrum movement. Yeah, so 
no worries about that, uh, Darlene. It's actually will probably help balance your hormones uh, as you're going through the many changes in your body uh, as uh, to be, to become a mom. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've got a question here from Carly uh, who says, my question is in regards to regaining, recapturing, reigniting my sexual energy after a date rape in my early 20s that took that away uh -huh. from me. Is this something yeah. that a daily Radiant Lotus Women's Qigong practice could help with? You know, I think what it does is return you to your dignity. Uh, in terms of you know, your sexiness, uh, in terms of like your self-confidence and your value, you know, self-value, I think this is what, you know, the, that is, that's a very personal discovery, I would say. Uh, I feel like what is so important right now is to find your, your compassion for yourself and to find dignity through these graceful movements. And it's almost as if the movements in their, in their grace return you to a state of grace. And then from that, you know, your, your relationship, whoever you choose to be in your life, uh, and that's a very important word, is that at this time you have choice. In that instance, when you were young, it wasn't a choice. Your your choice got taken from you, and uh, you know that that was a very sad and unfortunate act of violence. And so, when we do this practice together, it's first to return oneself to dignity and grace, and to find the empowerment within ourselves so that we can go out into the world making the choices that we want and need for ourselves. So I think that's the, the pivotal thing. This is the most important thing. And from there, you determine what you feel, you know, how you want to uh, find your sexiness, you know, share your sexiness with the person that you love or to yourself. So it's not exclusive that it has to be with a partner, but how you feel about yourself often uh, attracts the kind of person that you want for yourself. And if that if that's not a choice, then you know this is what we need to work on is empowerment of choice. Yeah. So uh, I I know of women that have not had choice, and you know to rediscover that in themselves, I think, is one of the most important things. And, you know, women who have been, uh, you know, young, very young girls that uh, were raped or taken advantage of. And, you know, to have to go through that and rediscover who they are, to stop asking the why question because uh, it happened and that craziness is in this world. But how do we receive what has happened and use this form to help relieve that pressure, relieve, you know, that sadness, uh, relieve that fear in the body instead of reliving. Okay, so relieving instead of reliving because that reliving of those old images need to be displaced. So a new pattern has to come into play so that we can uh, regain our dignity. Yeah, so I hope that helps with that question. Uh, it's a very sensitive question. And uh, especially, you know, with so many women that have faced that in their lives uh, to one degree or another. Yeah. So that's my, yes. my thought on that. All right. Well, thank you for your response. And thank you, Carly, for asking the question. As Daisy said, a lot of women have had that experience. So I think that answer probably helped more than more than just one person. Thank you. Oh, so whew, looking at the clock, yeah. we're just about out of time. So maybe we should go ahead and draw the name of our lucky winner. 
Uh, I have a okay. random number generator here, and uh, we have a numbered list of names. And as Daisy mentioned earlier, I'm only going to be announcing the first name for privacy purposes, and the winner will be notified by email. So let's go ahead and see what number we have and what name goes along with that. Scroll down, scroll down. Okay, the name is Chamara. So chances wow. of it being more than one person <laughs> with that name are pretty slim. <laughs> Congratulations, so we, Chamara. Yeah. yeah. So you have yeah. uh, just one free access to the course for the seven weeks. That's wonderful news. Um, so let's see. Uh, we, 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 we are just about out of time here, so we should probably go ahead and wrap up. This has been, Daisy, just a fascinating conversation. I'm signing up for the class, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I want to thank all of our thank viewers Lisa. for being with us today and for all of your wonderful questions. Uh, once again, Radiant Lotus Qigong Practice for Women starts Thursday, November 8th. And again, you can visit qigongforwomen.net to learn more and to register. So before we cut you loose for the evening, Daisy, do you have any final words for our viewers? Uh, only welcome to Radiant Lotus Qigong, the path for women. And uh, I'm so looking forward to meeting uh, all who, who register and sign up and empowering you with these techniques. Um, all the best to you uh, in this coming week. And I, I look forward to seeing you on November 8th. Thank you. All right. Thank you again, Daisy. It really has been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. You bet. And once again, thank you to everyone who joined us today. On behalf of all of us at the Shift Network, I wish you well and look forward to having you on this course or perhaps another one in the future. Have a great night, everyone.